All right, everyone, it's time for an extra video today, which is actually a little bit of a recap and like a post show. I was going to do initially like thought of a stream, but I have to do dinner. I'm making spaghetti, celebratory spaghetti, and Liz is making meatballs, so it's going to be a good time had by all. There will be links in the description because uh, this is about the kill stream debate that I had uh, less than an hour ago with Anomaly. Uh, who, by the way, and, and thank you to Anomaly for showing up and stuff. I don't think there's any bad blood there. I never insulted your fans, to be clear. I'll get into that. Uh, there will be a link to the straw poll, first and foremost. And I would beg people, please don't just say, well, I'm watching a Styx video. I'm going to vote that Styx won the debate. No, watch the whole debate. It was fun, actually. I had a great time. It went way, way over the time I expected, but, you know, we were ranting at each other. Uh, so please don't do that until you actually watch the debate. Get a feel for it. Yeah, maybe some of you, you're clankers, but you think Anomaly won. Maybe an Anomaly fan will see this, say, oh, I support Anomaly, but maybe Styx won. Yeah, that's, that's the way the thing should be. Second and third uh, links will be to the YouTube and to the Odyssey uh, stream as well. This was using Restream, so Ethan Ralph had that set up for the kill stream. Uh, there will be a bit.ly link to, uh, to the second, because Odyssey links, they have an at in them, and I've, I've f fucking tried to talk to Kaufman about that, but he hasn't changed it yet. So I don't want to put the direct link in there because he'd have to actually copy it out. So for you phone users, I've decided to use a URL shortener. Here's my basic thoughts. Uh, number one, and I know I'm biased on this, but I think I clearly won the debate. Uh, mainly because, again, as I recapped at the end, most of what Anomaly was complaining about with regards to Trump simply has to do with third parties. It has to do with gubernatorial decisions, bureaucratic decisions in some cases at the global level, and really didn't have to do with Trump, and I just felt like criticism of Trump is great. I've done it many times, as you, if you've followed me for a number of years, you know, there were definitely policies he had that I wasn't on board with. One, ironically enough, came up repeatedly, which was the CARES Act. It was the initial stimulus that was following shortly after, the initial uh, 14, two weeks to stop the spread sort of thing. It never should have been necessary. Insofar, however, as that initial lockdown predicated on we don't know what the hell is going on was enacted, it became necessary. The problem is, and this is the metaphor I used, Blaming Trump for everything that comes after is like blaming one person for building a shed and then other people building on it until it's condominiums. I know that may be a weak metaphor, but you get the basic idea. Trump never called for a mask mandate. He never called for mass lockdowns. He never called for the kind of restrictions that Anomaly himself correctly identifies as being problematic. The funny thing is, if we had a normal discussion, We'd end up nodding our heads at each other. We'd end up agreeing 90% of the time because we have s roughly similar political views. I just think this, and it goes a little bit into what Anomaly himself said, which is that you have to be able to criticize. You, in order for the conservative movement that I'm only vaguely part of because I don't consider myself really a conservative, I, I'm, I'm more often, I don't know, I'm in La La Land. Or I'm a stick sister. I'm a clanker at heart. The problem is, that you've got to actually focus on criticisms that are legitimate if you want that progress to happen. You can't simply say, well, I get the feeling that you're responsible for some ill, I'm going to harp on it. Anomaly wanted me to, I guess, give ground, which I'm not going to do because he's wrong. Uh, the idea uh, that inflation 15 months later happens because of the CARE Act made no sense. The idea that Trump, by virtue of the fact that uh, he said, hey, the vaccine's safe somehow is the same as somebody pushing mandatory vaccination is simply false. I like to, by the way, at the end there was actually a call in, I can't remember the username, uh, grilling me over South Africa, which was hilarious but has nothing to do with Trump. Uh, it was an interesting debate, at times a little bit insane, and I felt like Anomaly felt personally offended, but I mean, <laughs> this is something I'll point out. No less than three or four times during the debate, he insulted clankers, my fans. Uh, you're low IQ, you're all Trump apologists. He tried to dovetail us all, including myself specifically, with QAnon, which, as you know, I've never been a supporter of. I think it probably came out earlier than him to say it's just Nostradamus bullshit. Uh, I never insulted Anomaly's fans. Nor ever would. Hell, there's probably a lot of crossover. So I guess, what happens if a person is a fan of Clankdom, but also an Anomaly fan? Like, if they're a fan of mine, he's saying you're single-digit IQ, but at the same time, you're a fan of his, which means you're blessed and, and intelligent. 
I don't know, I guess that that makes you a midwit or something like that. Uh, I didn't want to initially play the below-the-belt punching game. Uh, in fact, uh, initially, I expected when I went into this, it's going to... I mean, there will be fiery points, because blood sports on the kill stream. But I expected it to be cons considerably more mild-mannered than it was. Uh, but when, it, it, initially, if he's just insulting me, who cares? Uh, you know, you're insulting me while saying you respect me wearing a Hawaiian shirt. It's a little weird, but I'm not going to get all fiery over it. But then he started insulting, you know, nearly half a million of my fans, and that's a little bit of a different story. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's a little bit of my recap, but don't take my word for it. Fucking watch it. I think it might still be live, actually, while I'm making this video, because uh, Ethan Ralph does a, a pretty elaborate sort of after-show thing where he talks and, and there's music and stuff. Uh, so you can tune in, uh, probably. But again, links in the description. Now you can recap it for yourself. It's on the Chillstream channel on YouTube. It will also be, I think, on Killstream.tv it is, uh, specifically. I think you have to sign up for that. I'm not sure whether it's free or not, to tell the truth. And it will be on Odyssey. I think that they replay chat as well. So you can, you can look into chat. Actually, it was funny because a couple of times he was reading chat and responding to other people. Uh, and, and it was just, you know, <laughs> a little bit beyond uh, the pale. But it was interesting. And I am happy that Anomaly came on. A lot of people don't want to debate me. I wonder fucking why. Uh, except for breadliners. But they only want to do it for their personal gain. As I said, I don't think Anomaly is a grifter, as certain people suggested. I just think that he changed some of the things that he said in accordance with what he believes is a reality that I simply don't perceive. And, of course, I don't like it when you call, you know, my half million or so fans, uh, single-digit IQ. By the way, let me uh, really quickly uh, go into one last thing, which was the fixation on inflation. Uh, we could basically, <laughs> maybe that should be the title of the actual non-live event. Fixation on inflation. Uh, the idea that Trump is somehow responsible for the stagflation we are now seeing under Joe Biden. I pointed this out and I hold to it. It's really, really funny because apparently... Inflation takes a number of months to kick in that just so happens to coincidentally make it Trump's fault. It has nothing to do with Biden's fiscal policies. I'd like to point this out. 15 months from now, because you know Biden is proposing $3.5 trillion in additional pork spending, uh, is the inflation then, like, like let's say he kicks it or is 25th or something, is Kamala responsible for his policies? And then if she spends more, is, is the next president responsible for her policies? Because she wouldn't get reelected. Probably be a Republican like DeSantis. Or Trump gets back in. Let's say Trump gets back in 2024. Will the inflation magically hit? And will Anomaly say then, hey, it's not really Trump inflation. It was Kamala's policies. Maybe Joe Biden's policies. If he's you know, still around when he's 82 years old in the presidential capacity. Well, I guess time will tell. But I had a good time. Again, though, please don't participate in the actual straw poll. Uh, until you have seen the debate for yourself. I think it's magnificent. I think I did a great job. I'm going to rewatch it 20 times. I'm just joking. I'm not quite that egotistical. I'm not a breadliner. That's about all. Peace out.